Now we listen to our next and last speaker, Mayor Trina Fermado. Uh, yeah. Sige, Mayor Trina. Thank you po for having me as well. And uh, I think what I'm going to share with you, uh, I think echoes and reaffirms what Mayor Chriselle has been saying. So I guess on that note, we can see that there are a lot of similarities no, for a lot of local chief executives, especially uh, female local chief executives. And I want to share uh, how this has been such a, an interesting problem. No? Parang sabi nga ni Mayor Chriselle kanina, it's something new. It's really... Because uh, we're used to typhoons, we're used to earthquakes, fires, di ba? when we talk about disasters so, or, or crises. So uh, something like this, which is a pandemic, is something that is entirely new for us. Uh, and siguro, it's been such an interesting challenge in that sense. Uh, and there's two sides kasi to it. Eh, no? So uh, the first side is the health situation, the health issue. So... How do you protect your people from infection, from transmission? Uh, how do you prepare your health workers, uh, your rural health unit, the hospitals, everything? So on that note, lalo na sa amin, no, kasi dito sa Romblon, we are composed of many islands. So uh, my municipality, Ojongan, is on an island with uh, eight other towns. And so one of the issues is in terms of transmission, how do you limit uh, transportation without necessarily... Uh, you know, uh, preventing people from uh, being able to move essentially, no? yung talagang kailangan nilang puntahan ng mga uh, lugar or mga kailangan nilang gawin. Uh, so what happened was uh, in our province, we gave two days, uh, parang palugit or period for people to come home if they wanted to come home or uh, to do all their movements. And then after that, there was already a province-wide uh, com enhanced committee quarantine. So in terms of that, there was a challenge for a lot of people. So we really had to communicate with them kung ano yung transport schedules. Uh, see, as we're on an island, so the mode of transportation is really by boat. So uh, talagang kailangan i-coordinate yung mga schedules, i-communicate sa mga tao yung mga schedules. And so after that uh, period, we already locked down or we already had our quarantine. So uh, there's that side, no? the, the how do you prevent the movement? How do you regulate the movement? Uh, to to make sure that infection doesn't happen or transmission doesn't happen. So aside from that, of course, preparing your health unit, preparing the local health workers, uh, mobilizing the barangay health emergency response teams. No, so uh, again, similar with Mayor Crisel, a lot of it is really engaging the stakeholders, talking to everybody who needs to uh, be involved, and sharing all the information with them so that they can make the proper movements. Uh, so aside from that, we also uh, did daily disinfection. So uh, we mobilized our sanitary inspectors, our trained spraymen to really sanitize every day, uh, go around and sanitize yung mga public areas, yung mga terminals, na mga jeepneys, uh, yung mga food courts, no, sa hapon. So all those things to, to ensure that uh, the areas are kept clean and safe. We also did a system for the trucking companies, no, lalo na dito sa enhanced qu community quarantine. So uh, although we're not allowing people or passengers to come in, syempre, we need to have goods. No, We need to be able to move our goods. So uh, we had to come up with a system where uh, even though the trucking companies would be allowed to come in with the goods, yung mga tao na nagda-drive, yung mga pahinante, they wouldn't be exposing the people here to possible transmission. So uh, we came up with a system. So parang meron talagang, uh, in, oh, oh, of course, in consultation with the trucking companies and the shipping lines. So uh, meron na siyang system kung saan magsistay yung mga truckers, yung mga driver at mga pahinante, uh, all those things. So it's, it's a complicated system, but uh, we've managed to work it out and we're able to do it uh, well naman sa ngayon. And then the other issue was yung PPEs, no? Yung, uh, alam niyo yung during the time, no, the first, the start of the ECQ, nagkakaubusan ng mga PPEs. There was a lack of supply of PPEs. So uh, we were able to mobilize with uh, the help of private donors. So talagang maraming tumulong. Everybody chipped in and we were able to do a speedy purchase of PPEs. At the same time, uh, similar to what Mayor Crisel was saying earlier, we also mobilized women 
uh, to help us to come up with face masks. So again, it's a double purpose thing. We have the supply at the same time, we're able to provide uh, livelihood opportunities for them. Uh, sa ngayon, we're also able to purchase equi- uh, the material or the cloth uh, for PPEs. So the, the women seamstresses are in the process of making local PPEs based on the uh, patterns. No? So uh, I think that we will be able to produce 800 to 1,000 sets of PPEs and we would be able to distribute this across uh, the province no? to all the hospitals and the rural health units. So we're able to come up with the supplies uh, through that. And yun nga, as, as uh, already said earlier, parang it's a matter of engaging no, the vulnerable sectors, empowering them, capacitating them, uh, providing assistance to, assistance to them, but at the same time, allowing them to be active participants in this battle, di ba? Kasi they're able to produce all these supplies that health workers and ordinary citizens can use. So aside from that, you know, as I said earlier, it's a two-pronged issue. Eh. So you have the health angle, but also you have the economic side, diba? Right? So uh, the COVID crisis and the ECQ, it's a health crisis. At the same time, it's also an economic conundrum. So what do you do about everybody who's been affected by uh, ECQ? So uh, katulad ng kay Mayor Cricel din no, sa Tabaco City, so our relief goods, of course, we were able to give relief goods to our people, we also uh, opted to buy the local produce of our farmers. Kasi alam natin na syempre naging matumal yung pagbenta sa palengke, so uh, we have an overstock of these perishable items. So uh, binili din po namin sila, so we mobilized our municipal agriculture office. So sila yung umikot mismo sa mga barangays. No? So the farmers no longer had to go to the market, but uh, the agricultural technicians went to the barangays to purchase the vegetables, the fruits, and all the other agricultural products. So uh, during the time na namigay po kami ng 14,000 uh, agri-ayuda packs, we were able to purchase around 28 metric tons of vegetables and fruits. So that's um, almost 28,000 kilos of assorted vegetables. We were able to purchase... Uh, 2.3 tons of dried fish. No? Kasi, syempre, isla po kami. So, ang daming isda ngayon. Especially since hindi kami nakakalabas ng isda papuntang Boracay, papuntang Batangas, Manila. So, ang daming stock ng isda. So, we were able to purchase 2.3 tons of dried fish, 185 kilos of fresh fish. And also, ganun din sa ating poultry producers, we had an overstock of chicken. So, uh, we were able to purchase uh, 1,500 kilos of uh, chicken uh, at yun nga po, nasama po namin siya sa mga relief goods. So, uh, baka similar yung experience ni Mayor Cassell, but medyo difficult lang siya, no? It's a bit more challenging to pack agricultural products as opposed to canned Just goods nice. and rice. Kasi yung canned goods and rice, kahit uh, matagal siya nakastock dyan, pwede. So, you have to come up with a logistic system to ensure na yung naproproduce ninyong agri-pack sa umaga ay may lalabas nyo that very same day. So, uh, it was a challenge, but everybody was up for it, and we were able to distribute to all households uh, in the municipality. So we also included vegetable seeds doon sa aming mga relief packs so para magtanim na rin po no, yung ating mga kababayan because we never know until when this is going to end. So uh, it's good for them to start planting no, para then they'll stay at home <laughs> during this ECQ. We also used echo bags and fishnet bags. And sometimes pag nabibigay po kami ng aming mga relief packs, uh, inaantay namin na ibalik sa amin yung mga sako or yung mga pinaglagyan so we can reuse them again. So uh, we're trying to also be environmentally friendly in that aspect. Uh, similar with a lot of cities and municipalities, we also instituted the Mercado on the Go. So ginawa po namin yung Mercado on the Go so that uh, people don't have to go out. no? They don't have to go to the bayan, to go to the market. So doon na po sila sa barangay. So my schedule po kami. We started with one truck but now we have three trucks who are going around and uh, in, the, in the first one first week, we, had, we serviced 2,622 households. Uh, we had an, an estimated revenue of around 950,000 pesos, so close to a million pesos in that first week. So uh, nakita namin na it was very successful and then we also make sure that uh, people are wearing masks when they go to the Mercado on the go, They're, they observe proper social distancing. Uh, and I can show you some pictures. Uh, let me see if I can share. 
the screen. And so let's see if this is possible. Uh, I don't know if it's sharing. Is not it? Yeah, not no? yet. <laughs> okay, so in the meantime, so yun, yun yung uh, ginawa natin. Can you see the screen? Or no? Not yet. It's not coming out pa rin. Okay. Sorry. It's my first time to do this. <laughs> Did you click um, your screen? Yes. Okay. You have to select. It has to be visible on your screen, the presentation. Uh, yeah. Okay. I have my... Anyway. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Okay, maybe I won't share it. <laughs> All right. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so hindi ko po share yung pictures. Uh, maybe later. So what we did with the uh, mercado on the go was that nagano kami nag expand. So we were able to expand to a nearby municipality. So hindi lang sa bayan namin nag expand na rin po kami sa ibang mga bayan. So uh, again, people are able to observe ECQ better because of that. At the same time. Uh, yung mga vendors namin kumikita. One more thing I wanted to share, kasi this April, the first week of April, we were supposed to celebrate our town fiesta. So we weren't able to celebrate. Siyempre, malungkot yung mga tao. Uh, and then at the same time, nag-crop up na yung problem ng oversupply ng poultry sa mga poultry producers. So what we did, di ba pag fiesta, ano, I don't know if it's the same in Albay, but we have, ano, uh, nagbibenta ng lechon. Ganyan, for a cause. Ganyan. So what we did was, uh, we did an online uh, lechon manok selling for a cause. So, uh, para mabawasan yung poultry, yung chickens ng uh, aming poultry producers. At the same time, to have that fiesta feel. So, you can order a lechon for 300 pesos and then uh, part of the proceeds will go to uh, relief efforts, so, yung aming food relief efforts. So, it was ano, parang a, a last minute idea, mga one day before fiesta, and we were able to get quite a number. We were able to sell 550 lechons and raise 47,000 pesos, so which we bought uh, for we bought additional food supplies. So, uh, natuwa yung mga tao kasi parang feel pa rin nila na fiesta kasi may kinakain silang lechon manok. And in fact, yung mga nasa abroad, they even sent surprise lechon manok sa kanilang mga pamilya dito. So, you know, uh, it was just uh, parang a cute way to kahit pa paano, celebrate the fiesta, but at the same time, help our poultry producers. We all, we're also doing the free shuttle services. So we started March 23. Uh, so we're doing two shuttles, uh, north and south routes for frontliners and health workers. And syempre, pag hindi naman puno, pwedeng sumakay din yung ibang mga papunta sa bayan at pabalik. We're also doing health assistance through e -reseta. So if you need a reseta, you can... Uh, contact our health unit through phone or through online at mabibigyan kayo ng uh, reseta. So we've also done this for especially for patients with psychological problems. If we're not if my doctor is not able to do that here in this in the health unit, we're able to access doctors in Manila, no, yung mga specialists. So we're able to come up with the resetas that uh, these patients need. We're also doing free delivery. So you must senior citizens na hindi makalabas uh, if they need medicines, they can call our hotline and then our uh, staff will go to them, get the receta and the money, go to the drugstore, buy the medicine, and uh, return it to them. So parang ano, free delivery na mga gamot. So I think it was very uh, successful for senior citizens. They appreciated that very much. We also purchased diapers and vitamins for our babies and milk and diapers for our vulnerable senior citizens. So we're really trying to ad address yung mga sectoral groups natin, which are most vulnerable during this time of ECQ. We also just launched uh, yesterday yung aming Libro on the Go. So ito ay isang mobile library. Uh, si Sangguniang Kabataan ang nagsispearhead. So we had a lot of donated books, and these donated books are uh, already... Uh, categorized and classified into a system. Tapos, yun nga, dalawang rota din siya. So, dalawang trucks with books. They go around and uh, the kids have a schedule sa barangay so they can go. And of course, social distancing pa rin and nakamask pa rin lahat. So, nakapila sila. And then they're able to pick out a book that they like and then they can rent it for one to two weeks. Libre po yun, no? So, parang, uh, it was very successful yesterday. Marami po ang 
kids na pumunta and they got books and then today ulit, no? So, uh, we're very happy with the outcome of the project. And again, yung sinasabi din ni Mayor kanina, Mayor Cassell, and I want to really reiterate that. Uh, the backbone of any strategy during a crisis should really be constant communication, transparent updates with the people. Kasi, uh, especially now, and daming tendency for fake news, and daming uh, panic, no? So, uh, people will feel more secure if they have the right information. So, uh, being a local chief executive, you really have to be able to reassure your citizens, provide them the proper information. Uh, of course, never sugarcoating anything, but always giving them uh, the information that they need so that they can be uh, calm, they can make the proper informed decisions, and alam po nila kung nangyayari. So, we started doing a daily Facebook Live. Uh, especially during yung talagang yung start ng crisis when people were hungry for information. So talagang uh, providing that information on a daily basis uh, through FB Lives. Yung FB Live namin, uh, sinistream din siya sa radio, sa local radio, also on local TV. So uh, everybody was able to watch it on different platforms. And then even dun sa aming mga relief packs, meron po kaming leaflet with information on COVID, what to do. Uh, contact numbers, hotlines, all those things. So we try to use every way to uh, share information with our constituents. And so uh, yung ibang FB Lives namin na pick up na rin ng media, kahit ng TV Patrol, Southern Tagalog, uh, because we also try to feature guests. So for example, nung kainitan ng camp at tupad, so ang guests namin, taga Dole, kainitan ng uh, health issues, DOH ang aming uh, kasama na guests. So we always have guests that can uh, help share that information to the people. So, uh, ngayong SAP, itong Social Amelioration Program, syempre maraming mga uh, changes sa guidelines, maraming confusion sa tao. So, we came up with a dedicated hotline and help desk for SAP-related concerns. So, doon fini-feed lahat ng mga problema and then we're able to reassess, reevaluate the forms based on the uh, feedback that they give. So, because of that, we were able to target uh, the rest of yung mga qualified for SAP. And katulad nga din sa Tabaco, we also realigned our funds and of course we used the Bayanihan grant. So we're able to provide some assistance under the OTAP program, Ojongan Tulong and Agapay program, uh, for those non-SAP beneficiaries. So uh, in essence, lahat po ng citizens, lahat ng families will have some form of assistance during this time. So really, I think that's the most important is providing constant communication, transparency, and being able to address yung mga vulnerable sectors. And it's been an interesting opportunity, an interesting challenge. But at the end of the day, what's most important is that you're able to help and support your citizens along the way hanggang matapos ito. So hopefully we can do that and hopefully uh, all the LGUs in the country can do that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayor Gina. Hello, Fabi. Patuwayo. Hindi ba? Tsaka hindi kayo mukhang stressed. Despite <laughs> all the challenges we're all facing right now. So before we go to the Q&A, um, we're going to call uh, Dr. Shelo Magno from the UP School of Economics who's also with the UP COVID-19 response team. We'll share something. Hi, po. Um, quickly lang po, dagdag doon sa sinabi ni Chris kanina, aside from, no, and, and nakikita ko rin kasi mga questions doon sa ating chat box regarding um, sir, uh, regarding testing. Yung sa UP School of Economics po, yung isang ginagawa naming partnership, kahapon kausap namin si Mayor Joy ng Quezon City, kanina umaga si Mayor Marcy ng Marikina, ang suggestion namin ay idikit din maliban sa monitoring ng ng kung sino ang infected ng COVID, ang pagkakaroon ng surveillance system. So ano po ba ibig sabihin natin ng surveillance? Ito yung uh, pagkukonduct ng testing sa select na population. Hindi lang po natin itetest yung may nakikita tayong symptoms ng uh, ng COVID. Kundi ang itetest natin ay uh, a certain uh, population. So for example po, ang aari natin gawin ay i-cluster ang, ang barangay natin to different um, uh, homeowners association. At kung for every 
for example, 100 households, ang gagawin po natin, mag-random sampling tayo ng limang, uh, limang individuals. Ano po yung ibig sabihin natin ng random sampling? Ito yung, literally, pwede nyo ilagay yung mga pangalan nung, nung nakatira sa village na yon sa isang bote o tambiolo, at talagang pipiliin natin yung limang households na yon So, regardless kung may symptoms sila or wala, test natin sila. Ang, at ang importante po dito ay weekly natin gagawin. So, kailangan may regular time interval. So, over time, parami ng parami yung masasample nating individuals. Ang goal po nito ay hindi lamang para uh, ma-address kung sino yung may sakit, kundi para magkaroon tayo ng malinaw na information sa extent ng, ng infection ng COVID sa ating lugar. Dahil kung maaalala po natin, may mga asymptomatic na individual. Sa yung mga asymptomatic na, na ito ay maari pa ring nagpapakalat ng ng COVID virus. So ang katulad po ng discussion namin with Mayor Marcy kaninang umaga, binabanggit niya na sa Marikina, may mga different housing associations naka-organize yung yung city into different housing associations at bawat association ay may member na 200 households. So ang recommendation po namin doon ay mamili ng 10 individuals randomly from those households at mag-test. Kaugnay po doon sa halaga ng, ng mga test kit, ang, ang nire-recommend din po namin ay unahin yung paggamit ng rapid test kit dahil ito ay cheaper. Uh, at kung sakaling may makita tayong mag-positive at saka natin gamitin yung, um, yung PCR na nire-recommend ng DOH para i-validate yung resulta and then doon po tayo mag-respond in terms of up separating them at uh, i-quarantine natin yung, yung, yung cluster na kung saan nakita itong infection na ito. So, yung cluster po ay maaaring batay sa geographic, yung mga magkakatabing bahay. Maaari din pong gawin itong random sampling dun sa sector na patuloy na nag-ooperate kahit na may quarantine. So, yung bawa po yung nabanggit natin kanina, yung mga pajak drivers, maganda pong ma- magkaroon tayo ng random testing sa kanila upang ma-monitor natin kung makita natin kung merong mga as- asymptomatic na maaaring nagsaspread pa rin ng virus. Yung uh, food, yung mga nagahatid ng mga pagkain sa bahay, ito po yung mga sector na maaari nating i- uh, i- uh, i-test. Uh, yung yung question po na kung sufficient ba ang 10 random samples uh, magi uh, bali ang mangyayari po doon halos parang lumalaki din naman kung regularly gagawin natin to every week so kung for every 200 sampo ang kukuhanin natin every week gagawin natin to at hindi po same household yung gagawin natin every week so hindi siya uh, panel na time series kung hindi different individuals every week uh, magiging enough na po yun statistically sufficient to inform the uh, the local government kung may incidents na po ba ng virus dun sa lugar. Ngayon lang po yung dagdag ko. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Magno. So, pwede na po tayo tumu- tumungo sa ating question and answer portion. It's already 4.12. So, we'll try to cover as many questions as possible. We still have 93 participants who are here. So, we'll start po with... Um, Councilor Cherise Abalos. Yes, hi, good afternoon. Yeah, I, I was the one that asked about the rapid testing actually and and if whether the sample of 10 would be enough. Uh, of course, our LGU is Mandaluyong. We are right smack in the epicenter right now and we are not seeing our numbers going down despite the strict quarantine and actually um i have a few questions for um mr peter sorry kaiton i think yeah um yun nga parang in terms of the uh up data um we know there is a lag effect i was so, so happy that the lag effect was mentioned because uh, realistically speaking Mm, a person will have to, I mean, the, the virus has an incubation of about 7 to 10 days or more pa before they experience symptoms. And earlier on, on the first um, stages of testing, they, they would only test the symptomatic people. So, uh, and then bukod pa dun, um, kami, based on our experience talaga, sometimes RITM results would come out at kahit two weeks after pa. So, natatakot lang kami na baka mamaya, the data that we're getting now, would only reflect on people getting infected 
three weeks or four weeks ago. So whatever measure that we do now, for sure we will only see the results of two weeks from now or three weeks from now. Now, I'm happy that bumababa nga yung uh, numbers natin uh, when it comes to new cases. But again, let's take note that RITM had to slow down their operations. So bumaba rin yung testing being done. But in Mandaluyong naman, uh, we partnered up with Philippine Red Cross. So I think we suffered for about two or three days of only having to be able to test five persons per day. But we started yesterday and today now we are able to test 100 to 200 persons per day now because of our partnership with Philippine Red Cross. But going to that, I see now the the urgency for mass testing. And yun nga eh, um, I am a counselor now and I am in constant communication with our mayor, but I find it hard to convince them to invest in rapid test kits because um, even our own doctors from our health centers are afraid of their low sensitivity levels. Uh, I won't say, I think, I, I won't say na lang kung sino, but we, there is another chief executive that spoke to our mayor and and told her that he regretted buying the rapid test kits because like one patient uh, tested, parang three times nila tinest yung isang patient and they all resulted in three different, I mean, in, in different results. Parang may nag-negative, tapos nag-positive, and then nag-negative ulit. So parang he regretted um, buying daw or purchasing the rapid test kit. So yun lang yung, yung sa akin, maybe I'd like, I'd like to know more input or what could be a better scientific approach that if we do purchase or invest in rapid test kits, uh, yun nga, 10 samples and then every week 10 samples na lang. Yun lang naman po. Clarification for that. Thank you. Um, siguro, ang kaya ko lang muna sagutin ay yung dun sa delays, dun sa reporting. Uh, it's because, um, yun nga, yung call to make um, DOH more effective in terms of how they would be reporting the cases. More recently, there has been one of the um, data engineers, uh, Nell Jason Howe, making a statement kung bakit on their end to providing the data, the public data available. Um, I've not, they've just came through the statement, pero they've explained yung different um, red tape of data, which is very weird because now that we're in this kind of relatively good technology, meron pa red tape existing in terms of how the data, which is something of like coming from software, is still having to be produced. But uh, besides the, the point of that aspect, we do recognize that there is these delays. And even DOH stores these data in the delays because, um, however, they are not making it available to us so that we can make the appropriate adjustments to our statistics. We know they, these data exist, but they are not publicly available. So it's one of those things that we are calling for DOH then to be more open in terms of what kind of data they're making available to researchers, to scientists, because having these uh, having a wider open data helps us to know the true situation. And ipapasa ko na din yung uh, call namin in terms of asking for data for from coming from the LGUs in terms of the suspected, exposed, and the um, expected, suspected, exposed, and probable. Because we know the quality of the data in these, uh, the quality of the data and if we can source it from NGUs, we can see what kind of adjustments we could make in terms of classifying the risk. Something personally coming to the work that I'm doing right now, because we could study the um, how a patient goes through the different compartments of suspected. Of, um, sorry, of, of the different compartments of classification. And once we know like this life of the the tendencies to transfer to these different compartments of classifications done by DOH, we can make some appropriate adjustments to the ending numbers for us to assess and maybe correct for certain adjustments to, like, for example, the RT and also the um, the outbreak, outbreak threshold classifications. Siguro for the RT, we would need longer data, at least two weeks of collection, so that we can have a more credible uh, 
bird's eye view of the situation at the localities. But with regards to the outbreak threshold, um, once we have the data from the LGUs, we'll study it a little bit, give us like a good few days of sorts to know the adjustments necessary. But from there, we could look at the um, adjustments that we could place on the risks. Um, right now, with some of the stats that I'm doing, I'm still heavily reliant on the availability from the public DOH data drop, which is limited, which really restricts the kind of analysis and the um, assumptions that we have to place in the data because these are coming from the source itself, DOH. And we have always been open in terms of these limitations that we've always said, as, uh, as I've shown earlier, na, we are only able to discuss this with those reported confirmed symptomatic cases. We can only only, we can only assume or we can only uh, think about what are the asymptomatics, uh, what happening in the for the asymptomatics, for those account for delays, and we try our best with some statistics, but we are very limited in this approach. So, yun lang yung kaya kong sagutin on my end. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Actually, uh, when Maya mentioned this and brought up the matter on uh, have been able to partner up with the COVID response team of UP. I, I really brought forward Mandaluyong. Um, maybe for later on, po, sir, or with Maya na lang po, uh, we can discuss further about this because Mandaluyong is interested po in your input and data gathering, but we would like to share our data with you then. Po. Maraming salamat po on behalf of the UP COVID-19 response team. Okay. Uh, Okay. One so more I'm thing. Sige. Uh, you know where? Uh, oh, sige, Charisse. Quickly lang ha. Kasi ang dami-dami pong questions that have been addressed. Yeah. Yeah. Pasensya na po. Uh, yun lang po. I guess one, one last thing is yung sa red tape nga. Because right now the ATF has yet to, con, uh, to, to really change their mind about uh, testing. So again, another another parang uh, thing that's blocking us or, or, or parang making us hesitant to buy rapid test kits is we know the results from that is not always recognized by DOH. So it's just something to add po. Okay. Uh, UP COVID-19 response team, is there a way that our local government officials can get in touch with you? If they have um, questions. Um, we do have a, an email, and mukhang gumagana naman yung email na pinost ko dun sa slide. It is, I'm just gonna type it on the chat. Sige, Pero ito yung natatandaan ko. So, magre-reply naman kayo? Magre-reply naman kami. Parang, ang nangyayari is, someone from, who reads the emails, sends it to the group, and tignan na lang kasi yung kayong sumagot. And I've okay. tried my best to answer some of the questions pertaining to the statistics that I am handling. Sige, please, can you please provide your email address? Yep, there is, the, it's there already. Um, oh, hopefully, yun nga yung tama coming from our um, technical notes. So just, okay, I'm, so if, going to if we're unable to uh, address your questions, you can just email UP COVID-19 response team. And also the mayors, um, Mayor Trina and Mayor Crisel, do you also want to please type in your email addresses in case there are questions for you? Okay, so I'm going to lift a question from our chat box. Um, whoever can answer, please answer. The question is, is the Barangay level already using a community-based information system to track COVID cases before implementing a community quarantine? We'd like to answer that question, Po. So Barangay? So in or sa LGUs? Sa LGUs, Po. Mayor, siguro kayo. Meron pa kayong information system at the barangay level? So we have the BHERTS, di ba? We have the Barangay Health Emergency Response Teams. So they're the ones who are in charge of monitoring all our persons under monitoring, persons under influence, so all those who are potentially carriers of COVID. So uh, kung magkaroon man ng cases, sila din, yung BHERTS din ang magbabato niyan sa rural health unit. So they have that information. But as to who makes the decision regarding, say, uh, in the lockdown of a barangay, for example, or kung ano yung gagawin dun sa barangay na yun, that would be really uh, be up not just to the barangay captain, but also to sa, sa mayor and then sa governor usually. So, ano yan eh, parang uh, it's uh, a joint decision, especially with the interagency task force. 
So, but barangay can be in charge of providing that data to the task force. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Trina. May, may question about gender, and I think I need to ask this. There's a question from Maria Estela Nacion to everyone. On a gen from a gender perspective, are the LGUs now collecting sex disaggregated data specific to the COVID responses? Will there be an update on the guidelines in creating a gag plan and budget for LGUs, NGAs factoring in the response to COVID? I don't know if you can answer the second question, but at least the first question, are you already collecting sex disaggregated data? Uh, well, I think in terms of, say, if for uh, the persons under monitoring, persons under investigation, yung mga related sa, directly related to COVID, uh, there is data on that. You know? Uh, in terms of those who are affected by the crisis, I think we can use the forms. Meron kasi di ba ng social amelioration forms, uh, yung SAC forms, uh, there's data there. So we can use that to come up with that kind of data. And that's actually in the plan no? later on, na himahimayin yung data coming from those SAC forms. And those who are not covered by the SAC forms, we've come up with our own uh, municipal intake sheets that are very similar to the SAC forms para... Uh, it's an opportunity kasi to get data on all families at this moment because everybody wants to cooperate and everybody is hoping that because they fill out these forms, they're going to get some assistance. So uh, this is a wonderful opportunity to get that, that kind of data. And uh, dun sa forms kasi, you can really see yung head of household uh, and then everybody that's in that household. So I think we would be able to come up with that kind of data uh, in the very, very near future and use that data to come up with tailored uh, programs for particular sectors and groups, especially for women. Mayor, it's not only um, women, but we should also collect data about, of course, yeah, the other... And I, and I think uh, there would be... Uh, andun yung data na yan. Pero of course, like for example, yung sa mga LGBTQ natin and other sectors, baka wala doon, hindi siya clearly stated sa form, yung mga... Uh, my problems with mental health and all those other groups, but it's a very good starting point. And from that, it can be a launching pad and the foundation to build on, on more uh, opportunities for data gathering. Okay, thank you very Pero much. Yes, for now, in, ano, limited. Siya. We understand, we understand. Thank you very much, Mayor Trina. And now we have a question from Cagayan Provincial Board Member Mills, Mills La Lawigan. Yeah, sandali lang. <laughs> okay. Actually, ang, ang question ko would like, ang i-address ko sana, uh, for the last 15 days, wala na kaming positive dito sa Gayan. Pero ang mga nag-positive, parang na trans, uh, transmission from nanggaling sa Metro Manila. We're planning to, kung sakaling depende on the decision of the president, pero ang isa sa i-recommend sa namin is, um, Parang i-close namin ang, ang mga entry points namin para sa nanggagaling sa labas. Pero within the area, magkakaroon na ng modified na ECQ such that meron ng economic activity. Although i-maintain pa rin yung social distancing and mask, pero magkaroon na talaga ng activity, economic activity. Pwede kaya yun? Sino pong sasagot ng tanong? <laughs> Ni PBM. I mean, yung like uh, yung yaan, yung kaninang statistics uh, based on that uh, picture kaya na kaya ma, ma, ma sustain yung. I mean, hindi na kaya makaroon ng bagong new wave of transmission or. Siguro si ano si na si Dr. Kaitoan. Um, with respect to Cagayan, kasi nakita namin dun sa provincial recommendation ng Cagayan ay parang sila ay nandun na sa um, ECQ recommendation from our numbers. Though I have heard nga po from a lot of news about Cagayan na parang if with respect to remaining cases, parang wala na daw ata silang remaining. Wala. Wala so, na. so in this respect po, well hopefully if we have the updated data of the province of Cagayan, we could modify naman kasi in the end kung ano yung parang mayiging recommendation. Though, May 14 PUIs pa kami. Yun lang. Yun, yun, po. 
yun din po yung importance po nung ganong data because we could see kung ano po yung pwedeng modification on the risk from the PUI or kung ano po yung tinagdag na compartments ng DOH in terms of suspected exposure, those compartments so that we can assess based on our computations yung ano yung risk level of the province. So right now, parang titignan pa po namin, we would really like to read through the data and see through how we can comp uh, how can we adjust the risk levels that we have computed based on the prevailing numbers in the province uh, for us muna uh, this is just me being the statistician here um tingnan ko ngayon kagayan ko na yung bibigay naming number <laughs> kasi yun na yung number dito sa akin eh uh, it's already been with me for quite a while ang um, asa na ba yun uh, province in the city yes <laughs> yes yes po um asa na ba yan in any case po um kagayan kaya ang email kagayan. na lang po <laughs> yan ay hindi alam 13 po kasi eh 13 ang kagayan <laughs> 13 cases for kagayan which is weird sinasabi ko yun ngayon ah um yung nakita namin kasi for example just a soft ano still under review is if you have PUIs parang typically 50% of the time nakaklassify na sila as confirmed eh. Something po nakikita namin with the national um, runs na nakita namin from some studies. So in that aspect, sabi nyo, sabi nyo na lang po, assume, pero you, we still have to verify no? around 7. 7 out of 13, hindi pa ho ata umaabot yun ng 0.7 for example. See, these are just stats coming around pero hindi pa verified so no recommendations from the um, brainstorm status before so parang yung ganung idea pero yun po yung point na once we have these data once we have those ano we can modify the risk assessment that we could uh, we could uh, give to LGUs and therefore they could have this as additional information to design what their what their policies will be. So, parang example lang ikagayan, but it could be applied po once we have a lot of data and have done a lot of research about it. Okay, we will email na lang po. Uh -oh. Thank you. <laughs> Can I just say something, Doc Nats? Uh, Sino po ito? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I'm just gonna say, si kasi Mayor ano, for example, po, ano, itong sa Luzon-wide na si CQ. Po. So, it's an imposition from the national Mayor government. So, sana po, nasha-share din sa national government yung mga ganito uh, data, yung ano ni Dr. Kayton na uh, ito yung mga parameters for us to declare this kind of quarantine or this other kind. So, um, kumbaga, kaming LGUs, we also are uh, just contingent on what is going to be imposed upon us galing sa taas and then work within that framework. So, sana ma-share din yung ganito mga pati yung mga previous sharings uh, ng UP uh, team na sana uh, makonsider yun ng national government when they make their decisions for uh, for what kind of quarantine. Okay, thank you, Mayor Trina. Fini-feedback naman po, eh, pero another matter po kung pakikinggan. Hindi <laughs> po ba? <laughs> but we are aware. We, we always we share our, our reports po. So we hope, we'll ask, we hope for the best. <laughs> Uh -huh. So, siguro, in, ano, ang suggestion ni Dr. Rakiza, let's take questions in sets of three. Sana hindi mo masyadong mahaba kasi I'm looking at the time, it's 4.30. So, um, ito po ang nakapila, si Difun Quezon Councilor Karen Guillermo, and then Alaminos Pangasinan Councilor Orange Versisa and Catanduanes Vice Mayor Arlene Arcilia. So, mm -hmm. pwede pong, ano, ikian po lang po natin ang mga tanong. At kanina po nakadirekta yung mga tanong. Thank you. Sige, let's start po with, ano, um, Councillor Karen, are you still there? Yes, po. Sige, ma'am. Go ahead. Councillor. I don't know why wala si Councillor. Okay. O, wala pa siya. O, sige, si ano. Um, Councillor Orange. Board member. I sorry. Ang councilor nandito sa ano ko sa listahan ko. Basa <laughs> na. Hindi pa ba nandito? Baka nag baka nawala na lahat. Si Vice Mayor Early nandiyan pa ba? Nandiyan pa ba? 
Wala na rin? Okay. Andito pa. <laughs> ah, okay. Hello? PM, sige na. You have the screen. Uh, hello. Uh, good afternoon. Um, siguro sa amin na uh, nas- situated in an island province, I think the biggest uh, challenge is getting access, especially sa food supplies. And of course, yung mga tests. Kasi ang hirap po talaga na uh, limited na nga yung aming test kits, especially yung swabs, uh, medium, uh, na ipapadala sa DOH for I- RITM. Talagang it took uh, so long para ma para ma receive namin yung yung ano yung mga results. However, siguro I would like to ask uh, other LGUs na same po ang kami po ay isang first class municipality under third class province. Um, itatanong ko lang po sana kung ano ang mga how how do they manage their food rationing? Kasi Actually, we, we really depend as much as you would like to depend po sa NFA for cheaper uh, rice rationing. However, because of the limited supply dahil island province po kami, so we resorted to commercial rice. But because of budgetary constraint, so yun din, yung supplies. And even siguro may, may, may pondo naman kami, but yung limited supplies even ng mga business establishments dito yun po talaga ang naglilimit for us to maximize our food rationing to the different barangays ng aming municipality so may i know dun po sa ibang mga LGUs with the same problem how do you manage kasi we cannot we cannot relate to the cities kasi iba naman po ang sitwasyon nila sa amin ng mga rural uh, municipalities and provinces <coughs> Wala yata may doc na ah, yan. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello. Sorry. Sorry. Does anybody can anybody respond to the concern of VM Arlene Arcillo is also a medical doctor by the way. So meron ba? Mayor Trina, are you able to yeah, or I, uh, I I would like to quickly respond to that. Uh, first and foremost is really fixing the logistics of it all. So as I mentioned earlier, we were able to sit down with the trucking companies, with the shipping lines, because uh, we have to accept the fact that we need goods from outside. So you have to fix that supply chain. So really sitting down with the truckers, what do they need? What kind of support do they need? If they need a subsidy or do they need uh, mm-hmm. help in terms of uh, kung saan magsistay yung mga drivers at mapahinante while walang biyahe? and then talk with the shipping lines or whatever mode of transportation that you have. So fixing that logistics system so that uh, the supply can continue to come in. Kasi may demand naman eh. So it's really more of fixing that supply chain. Also is yung, uh, yun na nga, yung pagrarasyon ng pagkain, you have to have a stockpile. So nag-secure uh, na rin kami ng aming stockpile para just in case meron naman pong mapagkukunan at least for uh, a week supply. And then you can also get DTI's help. DTI can assist you in connecting you with uh, suppliers or also fixing that uh, supply chain. So uh, you can do that. And fourthly, is to also explore local alternatives. Kung meron mang mga supply, katulad nga nung kanina na banggit ni Mayor Cresel at saka uh, namin na yung sa mga face mask walang available, so we made our own. So baka naman uh, there are alternatives to food and as well as other non-food supplies. Uh, we can explore that local uh, option. In lang. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. 